the best tasting fish of all is fish you've caught yourself straight from the ocean. But the way you clean it and prepare it can make all the difference between awesome and ordinary flavour. So let's look at some ways to keep that flavour at its best and minimise the amount of waste when you're preparing the fish. Rule number one is put the fish on ice as soon as you catch them. That keeps the flavour at its absolute best and also keeps the flesh firm so that they're easier to prepare. Now normally I'd scale them and clean them as soon as I'm done fishing, but in this case I've brought them home for the camera. These are Australian herring or Tommy Ruffs and they've got a pretty typical bone structure for most sea fish, so they'll be a good example. First thing to do is to scale them and I like to use a regular ordinary steak knife because I have a good serrated edge on there. You can use your filleting knife but that'll blunten it a bit and I like to have a really razor sharp knife for the filleting so any old steak knife will do and you just start at the tail end and peel the scales up like that. Golden rule, never let the fish dry out. If those scales dry out they'll stick like glue so don't do that. Take them straight out of the ice and start scaling them. Just work from the back to the front. Don't worry about the fins. Just right up against there to clean off all the scales. I scale them before I clean them because with the stomach in a round smooth shape like that it's much easier to get the scales off than if it's cut. Right up to the head. Then flip it over and do the same on this side. They're also much easier to scale when they're fresh. If you keep them in the freezer for a long time, then those scales can really stick on hard. So now I'll just wash that off to get rid of any of the remaining fish slime and all the other scales. Now, the other golden rule really is to have a razor sharp filleting knife. They don't have to be the best quality knife of all, but you do need to learn how to sharpen it. It just makes life so much easier and you're actually less likely to cut your fingers with a sharp knife because it doesn't slide off when you're not expecting it. So the first job is to clean the fish and I always start at the vent here and work forward like that between the two pelvic fins. Cut it like that until you get to the front of the gills there, then open it up and you need to separate the gill rakes from the front of the fish here. There's a point there where it's just attached. Slide one finger in from this side and the other finger in from this side so that you've got hold of that and just pinch it away like that so that's come loose. And then the same at the top of the gill rakes up here. Pinch that away with your fingers and then scrape it backwards with your fingers. Let it go at where you've still attached there and then scrape backwards until you've got all of the gut out and there you've got a nice clean cavity. Before you start filleting, it really helps to understand the bone structure of the fish. Fortunately, most edible fish, with the exception of carp, have a similar structure, with only slight variations in size and shape of the individual bones. The backbone forms a central frame with vertical spines up and down. The pectoral and pelvic fins are connected to the skull and gills, where there isn't much meat, so we don't need to worry about them. The dorsal fin at the top and the ventral fin at the bottom also have vertical spines that mesh with the backbone to make a flat layer of bones that's easy to cut away. The ribs form a cage around the belly. There's a line of thin pin bones that stick out sideways from the ribs. If we cut the fish down through the rib cage, you can see those pin bones sticking out sideways from the ribs. When we take the fillet off, those pin bones will stay in the flesh. They're very thin and difficult to avoid when you're eating the fish, particularly for kids. But I'll show you an easy way to remove them completely from the final fillets. If we cut through the tail section of the fish, you can see the flesh either side of the central plate has no bones at all. So the cut in this area is just a matter of following the plate. To begin filleting, 
I always start on the right hand side of the fish. I'm right handed, so the right hand side. And I start at the back, the tail end there, and make a little cut just like that. And then holding one hand on top of the fish, I start at the back just above the fin there with the angle of the blade just slightly down and then sawing action like that just to cut the skin right along to the head. Just to the side of the pectoral fin there and then pressing down a little on this hand to open up that cut and slide the knife along like that feeling the bones with the heel of the knife here until you get to the backbone and then put your thumb in to open it up a bit more and slowly carve it away when you get past the backbone you can angle the knife down a little further to go down onto that and don't lose any flesh the only bones you'll ever need to cut are these little pin bones coming out from the side of the ribs here and you'll feel those cutting through there they're pretty thin on a Tommy Ruff until you get through them and that's where you're ready to go so now one more cut up here just behind the gills cut the skin down to the backbone there rotate the knife over and cut away in the gap between the last rib and the pelvic fin And that's that side almost done. Now I'll spin that fish around so that you can see it there. And I start to work backwards now from the head back towards the tail. And the trick is to slide it over the rib cage and lifting the flesh as I go with my other hand. If you ever feel a gritty noise like that, that means you're cutting into a bone, you need to lift the blade up, rotate it a bit more flat. There we go. Keep going like that. And then it'll just cut through the skin on the bottom. And there's a perfect fillet. Just one more thing to do. The pin bones that I cut through are just here in the fillet. And to feel where they are, you just run your finger backwards along it there and you'll feel them just with the tip of your finger. They're in a line and you can sometimes see little dots along there where the bones actually stick out. You just cut either side of those down to the skin but not through it. It goes back further in some fish and not so far, particularly in Tommy Ruffs. There's only about three or four of them. And then you hold down the fillet with a knife and scrape out that thin slice of flesh and then that thin piece of flesh has all the little pin bones inside it. And you can just remove that. And there's a completely boneless fillet with all of the meat from the side of that fish and almost nothing wasted on the frame of the fish. To do the other side, the trick is to flip the fish over and put the head just over the edge of the cutting board so that the backbone sits flat then and you'll be cutting against a flat surface. If it's on the board like this with the head bent up then you'll have trouble getting this bit out here. So on the board with the head over the end and then this time I'll work from the front to the back. Again just above the pectoral fin there. Put that cut to end the fillet and Again, using the, that bit of the knife there, leaning it against the bones and sliding it along to cut the flesh. Pressing down on this side to lift the flesh away as you cut it. Until I get to the backbone. Feel the backbone there. So now I'll make that cut down behind the pectoral fins again. Like that. go and now I'll just lift that flesh away with my fingers and angle the blade down a little bit as I go past the backbone 
Now again, I'll have to cut through those pin bones there, and that's the only bones you'll ever need to cut through. And they're not very big on a Tommy. And then gently, gently feeling those bones of the ribs. If you hear that scraping noise, you're going too deep. And then as you come through along there, you just cut through the, the skin as you get to the end of the fillet. And there it is, there's another fillet. There's that fish frame with almost no meat on it. Some people like to keep those wings for soup. They reckon they've got the best flavor, it's up to you. That's the only bit that's gone to waste and maybe you can use that for crab bait. Now I'll just find those pin bones again with my finger. Cut a thin slice either side and pull it away by scraping it against the skin with my fingernail. And there's that perfect boneless fillet from a Tommy Ruff, all ready for the frying pan.